Would you believe me if I told you that there's an editing app that has more features than Lightroom and Snapseed combined and is completely free? I hope the answer was yes, because that's what we're talking about in this video. For those of you who are new to this channel, I'm Loic Ben Mahal Ford, a young photographer and filmmaker on the journey to become better at this art. I've been using Polar Photo Editor for the last few years on my Mac, but recently downloaded it on my Google Pixel 4 My first reaction when I opened it, I was like, what? They support this feature? They also have this? And they even have this AI feature that can do this? Let's get right into it. Okay, so the first step is to open a photo. So for here, I'm actually going to go inside of a folder I have inside of Google Photos to open the picture. So if we go right inside of here, we're going to have the first photo I want to edit. It's a little bit slow to open, but this is just a small disadvantage because it's opening a raw file, which is pretty good. So we're just going to wait for it to uh, open. Okay, so the file just opened and like on most apps, you can actually go inside of the styles here and choose different styles if you want to apply them automatically. Uh, they have a few that are free, but they also have some that are paid and you can create your own. But I won't talk too much about that. We're going to go right away inside of transform here. And I think this is very important, like I talked about in the video, is making sure that you are leveled. And I must say here, this is a very cool mechanism. It's very smooth, uh, making your level perfect. And uh, then like most apps, you have options here to rotate the picture, uh, rotate it around if you want to. You can also crop it, so you have all different options here, which is pretty cool here is that you have options for Instagram, uh, YouTube, and things like that with different sizes here. So for example, if we wanted to have it on a vertical orientation for Instagram, we could select that right away. I'm gonna leave it on an original here because we won't be cropping this picture. Uh, but what is even cooler is if we come here, we have our perspective tools, but we also have an option to go and add a border. So this is very useful if you have like a panorama or something like that, or you wanna create an Instagram story and you wanna add a border around it. So you can come here in uh, the aspect, you can select, let's say, a vertical shot for an Instagram story. And then you can add a border around here. And they're gonna su suggest a few colors that match your image here. So if we take a blue like this, we can quickly get a pretty nice image that we could post in a story on Instagram. So this is pretty nice. Uh, I'm actually not gonna do this. I'm just gonna leave the picture as it was. Might just level it a little bit inside of crop here, but that seems to be pretty good. Now we're going to move inside of the second tab here and this is all our normal adjustment features. So if we go on the exposure, we can actually bring up the exposure a little bit and we actually have exposure and brightness. Then we have our contrast setting. I'm going to bring up the contrast highlight and here everything works just as expected. I want to bring up the shadows quite a lot instead of this shot. I bring up the whites a little bit, bring down the blacks. Um, might readjust a little bit the exposure, but as you saw, pretty much what we would expect. Now, if we go inside of color here, uh, we're gonna have our temperature, uh, tint, and vibrates and saturation, and this is pretty nice because a lot of the apps that are free on the store don't have an option for vibrance. So I really like using vibrance because it does a better effect than a saturation on the pictures because it's not as intense on how it adjusts the colors. So we're just gonna add a little bit of vibrance and saturation here, and we might play. Um, with the color saturation, you can see this really changes how the picture looks. So I want to go something a little bit more like this to get something that I like a little bit more. So right away here, this is one unique feature of the Polar Photo Editing, having a Vibrance as an option. Now if we move on on a little bit more advanced features here, we start right away to have more advanced features. So we have the HSL tab just like inside of Lightroom, which is really great. So we can come here in orange if we wanted to make the orange a little bit more vibrant and we can bring it up and we're going to see that the oranges are brought up in the picture. Same thing if we go on the blue here, we can actually adjust a little bit more how the, our blues look. So put them a little bit more on the teal side. And this works really like inside of Lightroom. Uh, the only thing that we don't have inside of here is clicking on the image and then making the adjustments, but that's not a big deal in my case. Then if we want to come inside of toning here, we can actually adjust the highlights in the shadow and do some split toning. So if we wanted to, to play with our shadows here, we could go uh, and make them, let's say, more yellow, and then we could adjust them a little bit more on the red side, bring them up, and as you can see, we can play with them. Same thing with the highlights, if we wanted to make them more blue, more orange, whatever. Uh, but I actually want to go back and this is another nice little feature here. It's super easy to go back inside of your edits. You can just click the edit button here and go back anywhere uh, where we were. So I want to remove the shadow uh, hue, aqua hue. So we're going to go back, back. Uh, we're going to go to the here aqua hue. Done. 
we're done and we're back to our edit. I went and loaded another image for the next part, which is the effects tab. So if you come in the effects tab, there is a dehaze setting. And to my knowledge, it's one of the only apps that has a free dehaze option other than Lightroom. And I even think that Lightroom, it's a paid feature. Uh, but dehaze allows to remove some haze if we want to get less haze in the background or add some more on the other side, which is pretty useful when you want to get a little bit more atmospheric pictures, uh, landscape photos. Then there's also more advanced uh, features here. So we can add a zoom blur and if we want it, so this adds a zoom uh, blur on the side. We can also change the zoom the blur center, so we can put it here. You also have a radial blur if you wanted. I'm not sure if I would ever use these, uh, but they're an option if we want. So I'm just gonna go back, remove the blur here um, because I don't actually want it. Then if we go on the next tab here, there's also fringing, another feature I'm not sure I would ever use, uh, but this is what fringing does on your picture. It has these different layers of colors, uh, but that's another feature I personally wouldn't use. Now if we move on to the detail tab, we actually have more features that are similar to Lightroom. So we have our clarity side slider right here, and this is one of the only free apps that actually seems to have a clarity slider. I don't use it uh, a lot, but it's still one that a lot of people are going to be really happy to see inside of this app. Then we have the sharpen here, so this works just as expected. Uh, but what I'm really happy to see and one feature that was missing inside of Snapseed is the denoise settings here. So you can denoise your shot by just moving the slider here and it seems to be working pretty well. Then like I talked inside of some of my other videos, uh, tone curves are really important. So just like you would expect inside of the app, they actually have a tone curve right here. So they really have like most of the features you need to have inside of an app. Now if we go on the next tab here on Vignette, they actually have a lot more options for your vignette than um, Lightroom has. So they have options here for the feather uh, as expected, but then they also have an option here for the roundness. So you can make it more round, less round. Uh, so this is a welcome addition to get a vignette that really looks like you want. Again, I don't really use vignettes that much, but it's an option you have right inside of here. Now, if you go inside of green, uh, you can add green if you want to make it a little bit more like an old picture. And I actually think that the green inside this app looks a lot better than the green inside of Lightroom. Uh, but that's just personal taste, but it's a nice little hop option to have here. Then you have LUTs if you wanted to use them, but uh, I don't have any and I'm not going to go into details about what are LUTs inside of this video. Now I loaded another picture to talk about the next feature. Uh, so if we look at the tabs at the bottom here, our next tab is overlays. I'm not going to go into overlays, but they basically allow to add more skies, uh, clouds or things like that. But it's not like Luminary AI where it's going to do use AI to separate your elements. Uh, so I don't find them to be that useful. But if it's something you're interested in, it's an option here. Where I want to go in is into retouch. I don't usually retouch faces, but you're going to see it's a pretty powerful feature inside of here. Uh, so at the bottom here, you have liquify and you also have the face detected inside of the shot. So we're going to click on my face. Um, so then you have your normal options here. So if you want to have skin smoothing, uh, you can use that. I never use that. And all your other options uh, for the face, if you want to make it more or less saturated, you can change all of that here. Then if you go in your face options, you can make it wider, uh, smaller. Uh, you can change the height, but I just want to show you how well it works. So if you look at the chin width here, uh, we can actually see that my mouse stays in place, but everything around uh, changes perfectly. Then if we go in the eyes, again, we have all of the settings we would expect for eyes. So we can actually change the size of the eyes, uh, change the brightness, uh, change the clarity and everything. Uh, same thing with the nose, you can change the nose width, uh, but again, I usually don't use that too much. There's also options for the mouth, so you'd expect these features here. And you can change the smile if you want to make it a little bit more. You can change the brightness of the lips, and then you can also widen the teeth. And I, what I like here inside of the teeth widening, it doesn't make them completely white. It actually just makes them a little bit more white uh, than they are, which is a lot more natural. And these features might not seem like a lot, but these are features that we usually found inside of Lightroom. So it's very impressive that inside of this app, they all do that automatically using AI and that you can just quickly uh, play with the face if you need to retouch something really quickly. What is even more advanced is the liquify tab here. So I'm going to go crazy and not do at all what people would usually do, just make my face ugly and really big. 
Um, but liquify is what most people use inside of Photoshop to do very advanced edits on uh, pictures. So uh, this is a nice welcome feature that they have inside of the shot. So I'm going to cancel my changes here and we're going to talk about the next feature I want to uh, show. I open another photo for the next feature and when you open some of your raw files they're going to be very dark uh, but don't stress that's normal you still have all the information inside of the shot uh, so I'm just going to quickly edit it and then we're going to go talk about the next feature. I quickly edited this photo and we can see that the sky is a little bit too bright inside of the picture. So now if we go in the selection here, this is where it becomes really interesting and you can use AI features to detect some parts of the picture. So they automatically have some options here to select the sky or different colors inside of the shot uh, or just apply a linear uh, filter. So we're going to actually gonna select the sky here and you can see they do a really good job of selecting the sky. And now we can adjust the sky and just bring down Add the exposure of the sky here, add some contrast. Maybe I want to add a little bit more um, of the whites inside of the sky. Then go on the color tab here. And this is where we're going to hit a limitation. So inside of the free version, uh, all these other tabs inside of here are paid features. So you actually cannot go and use them, uh, but you still have access to most of your basic settings when you're adding a selection on the photo. But this is a little bit more advanced. So if you're just starting out to edit your photos, it's still perfectly fine that you don't have access to these features. Okay, so now if we wanna come here and adjust our mask, we're gonna see that they actually included the tree inside of the mask of the sky. We can actually go on the eraser here or on our brush, then change our brush size right here. If we go inside of property brush size, we're going to make it about like this and now we can simply paint out the tree of our mask and that's how easy it is to do it. So this is very powerful because you can actually really precisely make changes to your picture if you want to. I was a little bit fast on this one but you get the idea that you can really get into the fine details and adjust your mask as you wish inside of this app which is again really powerful. Once you're happy with your edit, the only step that is left is actually to export the shot. So if you come inside of the menu here to export, again, they have a lot of options. So you can simply save as a new photo. But if we go inside of the edit settings right here, we can actually save in different file types. So you can go in JPEG or PNG. Then you can select your qualities. You can select at best. You can also resize the shot if you want to resize it to another uh, size, which is pretty useful when you have pretty big files. And you can decide if you preserve your data inside of your shots or not, which is pretty useful for me when I don't want to publish my location data or information like that inside of the shot. So this is very useful uh, when you want to be exporting a feature, uh, photo. So if you want to finish it, we can just come inside of here, click save new photo, and it's going to save the photo to our uh, photo roll. Now let's talk about why you might want to pay to upgrade the app. So if you go inside of selection here, like we saw, the main reason why I would pay is actually to be able to have access to the other options inside of the selection here. There's also an option to batch it, export multiple files at the same time, which can be pretty useful. Um, but if you look at the upgrade options, it's actually pretty cheap and I'm not paid to say anything. I don't have anything to do with Polar uh, Photo Editor, but it's just to let you know that it's actually pretty cheap compared to Lightroom if you want to upgrade to it. Another thing I forgot to say at the beginning of this video, it's actually that it works on all platforms. So it works on your cell phone, it works on your Mac, it works on your Windows device, it works on your iOS device. So it really works everywhere, which is really great because you can use the same software on all your devices. Now let's talk about the reason why I won't be using it. And this is simply because there's no option to manage my files. So because I take so many files, it's really important for me to have something that allows me to manage all my files. So this is one problem I have inside of this app is that I actually cannot manage my file directly inside of this app. And this is why Lightroom is still more interesting for me. One thing that is important to note is actually that they still save the settings that you change inside of a picture. So you can actually export it, then uh, edit another shot, come back and you're still going to have your settings for this shot. So you don't lose your settings each time you export a photo like you do with Snapseed. So that's another pretty neat feature inside of this app. Since I started making YouTube videos, I've been getting a lot of questions about what is the best free photo editor app. And now my answer is going to be Polar Photo Editor. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by hitting the like button below and also consider subscribing. I'm usually in the outdoors making some videos, but it was a little bit too cold today to film a video outside. See you in the next one. Bye bye.